the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Earlier this week, I looked down at my hands and I noticed how dry they were. This is not uncommon, of course, this time of year, and it's the cold, dry air of Michigan winter, as much as we haven't had much snow, it's still pretty dry. Now, I'm going to do something a little bit strange. Maybe it's the strangest beginning to a sermon you've ever seen. I'm going to mask up here, and I want to know if anybody is brave enough to say you've got dry hands this morning. Don't be shy. Who's got some dry hands? Linda's got some dry hands. There you go. Who else has some dry hands? Oh, look at this. There you go. A little bit. There you go. You can do your feet later. <laughs> there you go. Anybody else? All right. Everybody else, you wait till after church. I'll give you some more. Now, I'll get back to what that's about in a few minutes. It will also it will all make sense in the end. Today, our epistle and the gospel have a common theme, but it's not really obvious because there was one word they had in common that we have to be really listening very carefully to catch it. So I want to focus in on that one word. It's a word that we hear a lot, especially in the church, but one that we so often misunderstand or at least just have a partial understanding of. And that word is mercy. We heard mercy talked about in the epistle in a way I think that we're a little more familiar with. St. Paul is writing to his disciple, Timothy, who he's training to be in ministry like him. And you know, we think of St. Paul as we see him in the icon there on your right, one of the greatest of the saints of the church, the author of the majority, perhaps, of the New Testament. And scholars would say that he's probably, his scholarship is behind even some of the Gospels that don't bear his name. But St. Paul, before he was the St. Paul that we know him as the author, an epistle writer, an evangelist, and eventually the martyr, Paul was the persecutor of Christians. When a few months ago we were celebrating the feast day of St. Stephen, when St. Stephen was giving his wonderful testimony to his love for Jesus Christ and being killed, off to the side and at the feet, or off to the side of where St. Stephen was, was St. Paul, then still called Saul. And at his feet were the jackets, the, the garments of the men who were taking off their outer garment so their arms could be freed to throw the rocks at St. Stephen. Saul at the time, later St. Paul, was one of the greatest persecutors of the church, perhaps its first. And so when we think of St. Paul, we often forget of the beginnings he came from, but St. Paul didn't forget. And he said in this morning's epistle, he said, Timothy, my son, the saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the foremost of sinners. Imagine what he's thinking back to. How many Christians met their death at his word. But he goes on to say in today's reading, I am the foremost of sinners, but I received mercy for this reason, that in me as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience for an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. That's the kind of mercy I think we understand a little more commonly. When somebody really deserves something bad or deserves some kind of punishment, and whoever in authority says, okay, this time I'll let you off. One of the most commonly used phrases in our services is, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We say it over and over again. Sometimes by ones and threes and nines and twelves, forties and hundreds. 
And so often we think about that mercy in the one very true but very narrow sense of God sort of letting us off the hook. We know we've sinned. None of us really know the extent of our sin, but the sin that we know, we know, and we want God to forgive and give us his mercy to not count it against us. So we understand that kind of mercy, and that's what St. Paul is talking about. It's a very important part, of course, of the mercy of God. It's very central to most Western Christian perspectives on mercy, and in most of their systems of understanding God's salvation, we sin, we deserve God's punishment, God gives us His mercy and spares us from the punishment. Well, our Orthodox Church has a much broader view of that, and it goes far beyond the remission of our sins, as important as that is. And that's what the Gospel talks about this morning. We hear in the Gospel of a man, a blind man, on the road to Jericho. Maybe you have been blessed to travel the road to Jericho from Jerusalem, I have. It's still a very lonely road, even 20 centuries later. Not a lot of people travel that road all the time, much less so in Jesus' time. And there is a blind man. And what's he doing? He's begging. Why is he begging? He has no way to earn any money. He can't go to work. There's no one that's going to hire him because he can't see. He can't build things. He can't make baskets. So what can he do? The only thing he can do is go to the side of the road and hope someone's going to come by that can help him out. So he begs with his hand out, hoping maybe for just a coin or two. But then in the gospel we hear that he hears a tumult. You know, people who lose a sense, whether it be their sight or their hearing, whatever that sense is, generally their other senses often get higher and better, more attuned. So what we don't know is what this man knew about Jesus. But he knew enough to do this. When they, he asked what's going on, there's a crowd going by, they said, Jesus of Nazareth is walking by. And he says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He knew three really important things. He knew his name. He knew his title even before it was written in the Scriptures, at least the New Testament Scriptures. He called it one of the few people in the entire New Testament to refer to Jesus by his messianic title as the son of David. And that third most important thing, he knows that from Jesus he can get mercy. Now, what kind of mercy? Is it the kind of mercy that we normally think of? Is it being let off the hook for something bad that he did? Possibly. Probably not. This man is blind and he's begging. He needs more than just somebody to say, you're no longer guilty. He needs food. He needs money to buy that food. And when Jesus gives the man his sight, he gives him much more than just one of his senses back. This is a man who had so little hope that the height of his hope was that somebody might be coming by along the road that day and that somebody who would be coming by would actually help out. He didn't need so much the forgiveness of sins. He needed someone to show mercy in a broader sense, a different, a more perfect sense of mercy. That more perfect sense of mercy is one that we can think about and see very clearly. This man received healing. But in getting, getting healed from his blindness, he was given hope. Hope that he could live a better life than sitting by the side of the road and begging. He was given the gift of beauty. Imagine never having seen a sunrise or a sunset or a tree, or the face of a stranger who would stop and give you mercy enough to put a few coins into the palm of your hand. He was given that connection and much more when Jesus stopped 
and gave him his sight. Jesus gave him love. And you know, to understand mercy, you have to understand it to some degree by where the word comes from, at least how we use it in the church. When we say in the church over and over again, Lord have mercy, Kiri eleison, that eleison comes from another word, the root word of it is eleon. And eleon is really hard to translate into English. Mercy kind of cuts it. And so typically we translate it as mercy. Kiri eleison, Lord have mercy. And yet sometimes in the prayers we don't translate it as mercy. We can't even find one other word. We usually use two words, loving kindness. When you hear the phrase, Lord, grant us your loving kindness, know that the word there is eleon, mercy. Yes, it's pardon, but yes, it is all those things that that blind man received when Jesus gave him his sight. Hope, connection, healing, peace, love. All those things are incorporated in the word elion. But there's another Greek word I want to introduce this time that is really also vital to understand mercy, to understand elion. And that different word is this, elion. Now, I'm not a good enough Greek speaker to tell you the difference between elion and elion. There's one vowel that's different. One has the alpha, one has the epsilon. And when I hear it, it sounds exactly the same. And that, my friends, is not by accident. When God gives us his mercy, when he gives us his pardon, when he gives us his loving kindness, it's like oil. Elion with an A is our word for oil. Specifically, at that time and place, olive oil. You can go down in most cities, you can in Grand Rapids, go to a store where you can buy dozens of varieties of olive oil. And they're wonderful. They're wonderful in their taste. Olive oil is such a wonderful food for us and very nutritious and healthy. But if you have dry skin and you rub a little of that olive oil on your skin, it'll feel like the folks who took some lotion this morning. Maybe I didn't put any lotion in your hands, but you know the feeling. You know what it's like when you look down and your hand has lines from the dryness. When you start to perhaps feel the pain of skin that's starting to crack. And it's rough and it's dry. And then you put a little bit of lotion on it and you rub it in. And your skin almost instantly begins to heal. The pain subsides. The smoothness comes back. The lines disappear to some degree, depending on your age. But you feel elion. You feel the oil in that lotion. And that, my brothers and sisters, is the fullness of what it means when we ask for God's mercy for his Elion, and he gives us his mercy, his loving kindness, his oil of healing, of gladness, of peace, and of love. You know, we live in a fallen world that for all the time between the beginnings of that fall way back in the Garden of Eden until now, there have been the results of that fall multiplying. The fall of man began with sin, which began the corruption of a perfect world, a world not in any need of healing. And that sin led to more sin. And because that sin brought us away from God, it started to bring even physical along with the spiritual illness. We began to be sick and to suffer. And eventually that sin leads to death which is why when our Lord comes and offers to us his mercy, his loving kindness by going to the cross for us, it is much more than just writing off the sins that we've committed. It is healing. 
It is restoring. It is life. And we, you and I, suffer from all kinds of suffering. Sometimes it's physical. Something as simple as dry hands. Sometimes it's more serious. We suffer from emotional hurts, from societal hurts, from relational hurts, all kinds of hurts and all kinds of suffering. And when we ask for God's mercy, He always gives it. Maybe not in the time that we expect or want, maybe not in the way we expect or want, but He always gives mercy, and it's always even better than what we could have asked for. And so when we think of whatever pains us, maybe even what you're thinking of right now in a suffering going on in your life, when you utter the phrase, Lord, have mercy, know that he does. Long before we even asked for it, it was there waiting for us, waiting for us to assent, to allow it to come in, to allow God to pour his mercy into our hands and to heal us in every way that we need healing. And if our comfort from his healing isn't enough, I want to close with one more really important thought that we heard in today's epistle. St. Paul, that great persecutor, that great sinner, become the great saint and the great evangelist of the church, said this, I am the foremost of sinners, but I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience for an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. None of us like our suffering. We all want it to end, whatever it happens to be. And God will end it in his perfect time. But one thing that St. Paul says that is so crucial for us to understand above everything else I've said this morning is that when God sends us his mercy, it's not just for us. St. Paul, because he knew the depth of his sin as the persecutor of the church, when he knows he's received God's mercy even for him, the one who ordered St. Stephen and so many others to their deaths, if God could have mercy on him, then perhaps there were others who God was calling to eternal life that would see God's mercy in him. By Paul asking for and receiving God's mercy, he became a witness, he became a testimony of God's loving kindness in the world. My brothers and sisters, you and I suffer, but our suffering pales in comparison to the suffering of those who do, do not know Jesus Christ, who do not have the hope that we have in the church. And so if we suffer, and if we ask for God's mercy, then let's not only be thankful for that mercy, but endure that suffering until the mercy comes. Yes, for ourselves, but also to be a witness of God's loving kindness of His mercy to those who will be witnesses of His mercy for us. If we want His mercy to forgive us of our sins, then when we receive that mercy and we become changed people that God calls us to be, that's the greatest witness of God's loving forgiveness the world can see. As St. Paul says to him as the foremost of sinners. So whatever our hurts are, whatever we need God's mercy for, let's receive it like we receive warm and healing lotion on dry skin. Yes, he forgives us, but he also, along with that forgiving, comes his healing, his smoothing, his loving. This whole world is one dry, cracked, hurting place. So much in need of God's mercy. And if our suffering would allow God to show his mercy to us, and by doing so, show his mercy to the world, 
then we can bear our suffering a little better. We can bear it with the hope of the God, the merciful, loving, kind God who brings us and gives us his mercy. And then we can gratefully and joyfully receive that mercy and share that soothing, softening, healing mercy with the whole world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.